It's Wendy Elaine Roy, the Hollywood Talent Manager. And today I have with me Jordan Woods Robinson, who is an actor and coach at Book From Tape Acting Studios in the Southeast. And I, first of all, I want to say I'm kind of fangirling right now because I was watching Loki this week and I saw you on it. That's not possible. This is Analyst 1118 E, uh, reporting a code uh, triple zero. Frank is rapidly forming at a slow oh, Somebody just bombed the sacred timeline. Oh my God, Jordan, you're on a Marvel show. Yeah. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Isn't that yeah. The, you know, the funniest thing about that, like I, uh, we had this huge casting process. It There was between me actually auditioning for it and being on set because of COVID, of course, um, there was about, there was almost, it was almost a year. It was, it was uh, 10 months between uh, actually auditioning for it. And then I didn't get booked until four months later. And then that was March. And so then we had to delay for a little bit. But the funniest thing for me was being on set in this like huge multi-million dollar budget project. Wow. And it was mostly blue curtains all around. And no I was like, kidding. I am just in a multi-million dollar self-tape studio right now. And I was like, I feel at home. <laughs> Well, I mean, I you are the go-to person for learning how to master the audition on tape. So Book From Tape is in Southeast, it's in, the, in Florida, the Southeast region, but right. it's online. So people all over the world train with you and yep. you are one of the most uh, well-known and uh, the busiest coaches for self-taping in the world. And I think the reason is you're so darn good at teaching how you need to use this frame in order to master your audition because yeah. all almost all auditions are on Zoom now uh, and yeah. they probably still will be for many, for quite a quite a long time going forward, especially for pre-reads and yeah. maybe some callbacks and maybe some things will be in the room, but so much is gonna stay on tape. So what I wanna ask you today is, is there something specific actors can do immediately who are watching right now that could better their self-tape audition, like a tip that you could give them? Yes. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Okay. So yeah, I've got a couple things to throw at you. I've got some notes here. Um, but the main thing, you already said this, but the main thing that I want to preface with all of this is that y'all as actors in the self-tape world, we start to think like we have to, we have to fit within this perfect rectangular box right here, right? Everything has to be here. And we start to hear uh, opinions from other creatives, other agents or managers or casting directors or actors or coaches or someone else saying like, hey, you were you were moving too much or hey, you almost went out of frame here or hey, yeah. you're, you know, like, and, and we start to get in our head and we start to sabotage ourselves a little bit by wanting to fit this world and not break this world. And what we end up doing is completely killing our physical impulse, which if you were on set, the moment you get on set, there's gonna be a professional camera crew and a director and a cinema, you know, a cinematographer and director of photography, all these people who are going to be watching you and following your every move so yeah. that you can just live impulsively on set, right? So that is what I encourage my folks to get back to. Here's one of my main ones. This is something that people can do immediately with the very next piece of text that you get. I want you to put it in your own words. I want you to get it off the script. This is, here's a script. This is just a sample. This is a, a fake Nickelodeon script. Uh, it's just black ink on white paper. That's all this is. It is a clue that a writer wrote in their one bedroom flat on the West Coast to send out to the rest of the world to say like, hey, everybody, here's, here's the goal that we're going for here. And, but it's not meant to live on the page. It's meant to live in your body. In your and, body. If, if it were if it were meant to live on the page, it'd be a book and the writer would write a book and it would be 400 pages long and it would have a far better imagination than we can provide, right? That so, makes perfect sense. If it was meant to be in the book, as a, just as a book, it would just be a book. But the fact that the script means it wants a human being's body, soul, spirit, and mind to interpret it. Absolutely, okay? So here's what I do. Whenever I pick up a script, and this, is, this has always been my process, um, or lack thereof. I don't really have a defined process. I don't think we should prescribe a process at any point. But I read this. I read the script. For me, I read the script two or three times before I understand the script. Before I could like put the page down. For others, it might be five times, ten times. But read the script and then put it down and get up. Get on your feet. Go into a go into a, a room where you can shut the door and start to run through it and put it in your own words. Don't worry about the text that's on the page yet. If you understand it, you're gonna be able to get from A to Z with 
being able to fill it in yourself. And what's going to happen is by the time you get to the point where you can tell this story using your own words, going off on tangents, telling other stories, lots of people have you write your backstory on the back of the page. I personally think that's a mistake because it continues to lock it into the page. Mm. It's not meant to be in the page. It's meant to be in the body. So share it with the room, right? Say it out loud. Say what you would want to say. And then once you get to the point where you can get to the scene repeatedly and connecting to emotion, physically getting through it, then you go back to the script and you allow these words to settle down on top. What you have just done is you have just found everything that you could say, everything that you would want to say. And now everything is a clue. In your own words, you were saying, I love you. On the script, it says, I adore you. And you go, oh my God, it's the difference between love and adore. I've never actually loved them. I've always thought of them as my best friend or my sister. That, make, that fits everything now, right? And now everything, every little punctuation mark is a clue. And so when you show up in your self tape or in your audition or in your performance, you continue to have that freedom of being able to say whatever it is that you wanna say. I can say when I, whatever I wanna say right now, and you can too. And when you're on set, you can say whatever you wanna say, period. But in the moment, you choose to use these words because, not because someone told you to, not because you memorized them, not because you had a process where you had to go through and say it 10 times in a row and then move on to the next one, but because in the moment, out of the infinite things that you could say, these are the words that are right for you. One of the mistakes new actors is they get the script has got to memorize these lines, you know, and then they're like, okay, I, but I always tell actors, you know, as a manager myself, I've always told actors, you, you can't just memorize these have nothing they don't connect to anything they don't attach to anything they don't right. attach to any meaning they don't attach to any emotion so instead of just memorizing let's build the story first yeah. and figure out what we're talking about so i love your technique that you just suggested of getting off you know you read it read it through to figure out what the story is really you know right. understand it uh, several times however many times you need to do it and then get off the page completely and just say it from your heart from your soul from how you would say it in every way that you want to say it genius yeah. Jordan, yeah. and that's why we sent people to book from tape. Because when you apply that method, that's going to drastically change how you perform your audition. And that's the difference between booking or just having an audition. I know that if you're watching this, you probably want to book the job, right? And the reason why his studio is called book from tape is because a lot of Jordan's projects have been booked from tape. So let's talk about props. Do you use props in an audition? Yes. Okay. So I want to talk props. I want to talk entrances and exits. And here's why. So first of all, the reason why almost every casting call you see says no props in bright red uh, capitalized letters is don't use props. We don't want to be at the props is because quite frankly, most actors use props incorrectly. Bottom line. It ends up taking over the scene. It ends up being distracting. And the whole thing becomes about the prop. And yeah, then we're not looking at you. It's the same reason why we don't wear logos on our shirts. It's the same reason why we try to have a neutral background, which by the way, this is not. And uh, neither are mine, but so don't yeah. copy us. <laughs> <laughs> but when somebody says no props, I'm like, all the props, great. I'm gonna use all the props, but no. But here's the reason why, like I've had a guy, here, here's a good story. A guy came in one time who needed to audition for something. And, uh, and he's playing a farmer. He's wearing his overalls and he put like a little bit of dip in his lip or something in order to like feel the part. And he came in and he had to be holding a rifle. And, uh, and he was like approaching some kids on his farm, right? And he comes in and he's like, he's got the rifle here and he's, he's miming it. And I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we did a couple takes. And then I said, hold on just a second. And I was at my home studio. So I went into my closet and I grabbed an electric guitar and I brought it out and I handed him the electric guitar. And all of a sudden his body just went, Oh. You know, and because he knew that he had this weight, he knew that he had this power and we didn't see it on camera and it didn't matter because all of a sudden he walks up knowing that he doesn't have to do anything and he can just tell these people to get off his property. Right? And that's it. So when we use a prop to enhance the scene, when we use it for ourselves, it doesn't need to be on the, on the screen. If we try to show it, that's not acting anyway, right? Like then we're just, we're trying to fit this perfect rectangle again. Forget yes. that. Use I it for it. yourself, you know? I and love you what you're to... saying because the, then it, it went into his body. Yes, power. Exactly. He knew he had that thing. He wasn't pretending he had it. He knew he had it. So that brought a completely different energy to the scene. Exactly. And I've got a fake, truly fake, like, but metal gun that I have in my studio that 
just if somebody knows that they're supposed to be, I just hand it to them, have them tuck it in the back of their pants. And it just changes our physicality, right? If, um, if a person is, is going through something, I might hand them a towel and have them wring it off, off camera. Or if you're reading a book, truly have a book there and put your, cut your sides out and put them in your book and read it. You know, like there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a quote by Bertolt Brecht, who is a director and theater practitioner and writer, who I'm gonna paraphrase this, but he said, um, if you're, he, he did lots of stage productions and he said, if you're carrying a hundred pounds, don't play 110. And like, if you are literally, if you're carrying a bag across the stage, that's a hundred pounds, you don't need to add anything to that. Just do it. Just carry right? that. Wow. Yeah. And that is how we can use these props. If the prop is being 110 pounds, then forget it. it, it you know, there is an art that goes to creating self tapes. Yeah. It is not something you just throw yourself in front of a camera and start doing. You really have to learn the techniques behind recording yourself on camera, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll talk entrances and we'll talk relationship to camera. And I think okay. this will give folks lots of good stuff too. First of all, there are lots of scenes where, uh, where the either the script says you have to have an entrance or where as an actor you say, I really, I want there to be an entrance here. You know, I want there to be something. And the bottom line is, yes, there should be an entrance at almost every scene. Every scene is an interruption. Either you're being interrupted or you're interrupting someone else, okay? And so one of the best things that we can do is to give ourselves space to room, or space, space to move, room to move. Um, and so whenever you have an entrance, uh, two things. One, it's always 100% better to start from the back, already on camera, and to move forward toward where you're going rather than this coming from the side where'd he said, go hey can i help you oh. right <laughs> so all we just got was the that time in of hey can i help you as opposed to if i were back here hey can i help you right like that was just the simplest little co-star version that we can have but we got to see the interruption we got to see you working on something and we got to see your body on on camera the whole time but let's say I'm walking down a path and someone else interrupts me. So my goal is to go this way. So I'm walking and I get what, yeah, what's up, right? Okay, then I put my eye line on the other side. So I wanna go this way and I wanna go here. So now we can work a whole world of, I, my whole goal is just to go down the path, is to walk into my house. And so I go, yeah, uh, no, I really gotta get going. Yes, no, well, I mean, I could run back to my car. No, okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. No, I'll, I'll see you next time. Okay. All right. See you. Right. And then keep going. And you just created this whole relationship. What you just said is so important because when people start the scene from off camera and come in, they just wasted very precious time. Mm -hmm. And also the concept that you're interrupting something. Everything in life is an interruption. Like you're doing something, you're watching TV, the phone rings. You, mm -hmm. were, you had a, something you were doing before the phone rang. So it's yep. important to establish the moment before what is interrupting you and then going back to what you were doing. Because you have the intention, like you said, you're going across the park. And so yep. if you're going across the park, someone interrupts you, that's an interruption, but you're going back across the park. So your body's still ready to go. Yeah. But you're going to deal with whatever this is and then get to where you're going. All exactly. of those techniques that you teach at Book From Tape completely transform the scene. It makes it more realistic. It makes it more believable. And when it's believable, that's what casting is going to respond to. So yeah. learning those techniques of how to make your acting work and your presentation in your audition believable is critical for every actor to master. So how can actors get in touch with you and work with you at Book From Tape? Uh, easiest way is to go to bookfromtape.com. You can book online. We have online classes. We have in-person classes. We have private coaching, both virtually or in-person. And we have uh, occasional workshops and things as well. But bookfromtape.com, uh, from there, you can find email addresses or phone numbers, uh, or you can just book everything directly on the website and see our full availability. Fantastic. And if someone is, has an audition, let's say, uh, can they audition coach with, can they coach on their audition with Book From Tape? Yes. And so, yeah, so we, we uh, have multiple taping rooms in person, but if you are virtual, uh, you can either coach with us beforehand and then tape it at your own place, or we offer virtual self-tape where we help you get set up in your self-tape studio. And then we'll come in virtually on another device on a computer or an iPad or something. And we will serve as your reader and your coach uh, while you're running your session. Oh my God, that's fantastic. Yeah. Jordan, 
thank you so much for being here today. You are the master of self tapes. And um, I just thank you so much for your time and energy, your expertise, your passion. I love you. Have a great day. Thanks for coming. And, thank you, Wendy. and I'm Wendy Elaine Wright, and I'll see you next time. It's Wendy Elaine Wright, the Hollywood Talent Manager, and today I have with me Jordan Woods Robinson, who is an actor and coach at Book From Tape Acting Studios in the Southeast. And I, first of all, I want to say I'm kind of fangirling right now because I was watching Loki this week and I saw you on it. I know that if you're watching this, you probably want to book the job, right? And the reason why his studio is called Book From Tape is because a lot of Jordan's projects have been booked from tape. There is an art that goes to creating self tapes. Yeah. It is not something you just throw yourself in front of a camera and start doing. You really have to learn the techniques behind recording yourself on camera, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most actors use props incorrectly. Whenever you have an entrance, uh, two things. One, it's always 100% better to start from the back already on camera and to move forward toward where you're going rather than this coming from the side. Where'd he go? Like, hey, can I help you? Oh. Right? <laughs> so all we just got was the, that time in of, hey, can I help you? As opposed to if I were back here, Can I help you? What you just said is so important because when people start the scene from off camera and come in, they just wasted very precious time.